What's going on, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to episode number 16 of Eat, Speak, Compete, the podcast where we talk about everything going on in the esports and gaming space every single week. I'm your host, as always. My name is Yeso, joined by my co-host, Luke Shimon Hebrew. It's a new year, mm. but the same old podcast. Happy New Year, Luke. Welcome back. Good to see you. Happy New Year. Good to be back. It's been a hot minute. Uh, we it's definitely. Been, it's been like... A month. It's been like a month. So, you know, we, we do bring you guys gaming news every single week, but the holiday. Other has, than like yeah, the last other three than weeks. The last couple of weeks. And now we're back and it's all the time. But, yes. Uh, good to be back. Episode 16. Yeah. Nice. We're climbing our way towards 20 and um, kind of an interesting time to be covering news, right? Because like a lot of the tournaments obviously slowed down necessarily towards the end of the year. And then um, it was mostly just everybody with their free time running wild on Twitter. So it was. It was definitely uh, an interesting time, but I'm excited to kind of jump into some of our uh, topics of the day. Yeah. Uh, we, as a company, kind of took about 10 days off uh, for the holidays, which was nice. God knows, you know, grinding all through 2021, a ton of stuff, especially packed up at the end of the year. So it was nice to have that uh, little break. And I guess the nice thing for us was that for the most part, there really wasn't a ton of news over that 10 day break. But uh, as you kind of said, as we were preparing for the show, uh, Twitter Hmm. didn't really take a break over those 10 days and esports Twitter uh, followed suit for sure. Uh, so we'll start at the top with that uh, little Call of Duty news. We touched on the CDL before. Uh, I think a few episodes back we talked about how we felt like this is really uh, a make or break year for them in the CDL and it seems like they may be trending towards the break direction. Uh, there really hasn't been, uh, again, any new big developments, but it just seems like continually right now, players, orgs, coaches, all kinds of people are just not satisfied with Call of Duty for uh, a, a litany of reasons, right? Call of Duty Vanguard comes out, there's a significant delay in when the league is starting. Uh, players aren't happy with the state of the game, whether it's regular Call of Duty or Warzone, uh, and it just seems like the entire Call of Duty community is not happy with the state of the game, with the developer, with how the Call of Duty League is being run. What are your kind of thoughts on the state of everything there? Well, it was just like, I don't really fall too much in Call of Duty, at least recently, because it's like, like you said, right? No, there's nothing to do. There's nothing yeah. to watch. There's no like, I can like, Watch Tim the Tatman like once a month, and I'll like catch up on all my Call of Duty news. You know, like there's not <laughs> just, just like just one stream. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. It's all right, like, all right that's a, this, what's going on. Same thing. See you uh -huh. later. You know, but you know, when it when it comes to the competitive side of things, obviously, especially like Nade Shot, Hex, sure. you know, like the big guys, I, I follow all of them, of course. So seeing them, you know, doing podcasts together, just like having an open discussion on stream about the state of Call of Duty, where they wanted to go, kind of, you know, what they're upset about, etc. And it was brutal. You know what I mean? Yeah. They were just like, they were laying into it, especially like Nade Shot, who I think one of the quotes that they like really pulled out of the whole breakdown was just that, you know, he's the one who sold the Call of Duty World League back to 100 Thieves. He was like, guys, no, we need to get back in there. Mm -hmm. Like, trust me, like, you know, I, the, the, you know, the community will rally it. The community wants it. They need us in the Call of Duty League. Like, let's get back into it. And he's like, I was the fool. Look at me now. Look at me two years later. I'm the fool. Well, and, and I think the point to be made there is I, I don't know that Nade Shot was necessarily wrong because I think the Call of Duty community is hungry. I think LA Thieves has done, has done a lot of great things, but it's been from the league and developer side. They have not given it the support that it needs and have seemingly continued to make decisions that kneecap what the CDL should be able to do for Call of Duty. And so he does look like a fool if you just look at the state of things but it, it really uh i think doesn't uh speak to the fact that i think la thieves and nade shot and hundred thieves as a whole have done a lot of great things and so have a lot of these orgs and i think that's why it's an even bigger shame and it goes back to one of the tweets that he put out uh in in criticizing everything that's going on where he was talking about oh call of the duty came from you know 256 teams in a bracket and all these guys battling uh, a whole weekend for like a thousand dollars and we've come from that and all the intensity and passion to months after the release of a game and not having any comp any esports competition whereas and this is going to continue to happen because it is a, a relevant comparison you look at a game like halo infinite that released early uh, uh you know 
partially to mark the 20th anniversary of Halo and Xbox, but also so that players could get their hands on the game and start playing prior to a major, an international major that launched the game essentially a month after it released the beta. And then you look at Call of Duty and Call of Duty, you know, they can't seem to get out of their own way right now. And you've got pros left and right talking about, oh, I'm going to go play Apex. I'm going to go play Halo. I'm going to go play Valorant because it just seems like it's not worth their time to continue to stay in Call of Duty. It's not worth the brand's times either. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it's just, it's obviously just a bummer because, or sure. I don't know, it's, I don't even know if the word bummer is right, but it's just one of those things where it's like... It's, it's, it's a like bummer the, for like the people the end, in the community that love the It's like an end of an era. Yes. You know what I mean? Like, we've been watching Blizzard and Activision implode on themselves, like, for months on this podcast now. Yes. And, uh, and in years in the industry in general. Yeah. And it's just like one of those things where this last Call of Duty, like, I remember watching the trailer, and it was like, oh, it's an awesome trailer. I didn't even know the game came out. Like, it was, like, literally, like, a month after the game came out, I was like, oh, people playing Vanguard? Yeah. That game, is that, like, is that out of the beta now? It's like, yeah. you can, like, play, you know, because I played it at the beta. The, I thought the video was cool, but I was like, there was no events. There yeah. was no, like, you know what I mean? It was just, like, I couldn't get Halo out of my brain. Sure. For, like, a month, right, you know? So, I don't know. I think you're right. It's it's definitely an end of an era. It's it's a bummer for the, the, the teams and the organizations that did do a lot of good for the community itself and, like, want to build that community out. But at the same time, it's, you know, it's like Fortnite. It's like... They had their limelight, and then Apex was able to slide in there and actually create a really cool competitive BR. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And it's like the same thing can happen in the Call of Duty space. Super people. I'm just kidding. It's a joke, but they got we got we got Halo now. So real real quick side note though, have you played Super People? Yeah, not for me. No. Yeah. Did you like PUBG? Yes. Okay. Do you feel like it is too much like PUBG or not enough? Not enough. Not enough. Okay. Fair enough. But that's because going into it, that's what I wanted to play. Yeah, you just wanted to play. I want to play PUBG, and it's like, oh, they didn't exactly rip off PUBG. Mm -hmm. Damn it! You know, I really it want. It does feel like it. Though. Yeah, but it's like the whole like uh, the class, the classes, and, stuff. and the ability stuff, mm -hmm. and it's just like it's, uh, I just didn't want to learn a whole other shooter game. Sure. You know, I'm playing. I got Valorant and Halo that I. Yeah. If yeah, I want yeah. to play shooters, I'll play those. Yeah. You know, and it's or I mean, in worst case, I'm playing Apex too. So it's like there you go. You know, but you know, I downloaded random it, random BR. Downloaded like it, that. played it a little bit, man. Yeah. Maybe check looks out cool, Super though. Yeah. Looks it cool. does look cool. It's not for me. Uh, so the CDL having some issues there. Yikes. Uh, let's jump over to our next Twitter hot button topic. Uh, let's talk about let's talk about our old friend Thorin. Mm. Um, so if you guys missed what happened, and this has now been going on for almost a week uh, at this point, um, ESL recently announced a five hundred thousand dollar women's csgo circuit uh which i think is awesome um and in the announcement for the circuit there was a section that talked about trying to uh combat discrimination and toxicity in the esports space and how this initiative was uh to you know hoping to do that and and create an environment for women to compete in the, in the space and succeed. Uh, and if you know Semler, who was a very popular CSGO caster uh, and personality, saw this and came out and said, and it's been characterized as a joke, I guess, but Semler basically said to the effect, oh, you're trying to battle discrimination and toxicity by discriminating and being toxic. Semler obviously got dogpiled by everybody on Twitter Thorin then came to his defense, and I want to read defense. a section from uh, an Invent Global article that I feel like just kind of summarizes where things ended up. Uh, it says, but as the days went on, Thorin's tweets became even more unhinged and strange. He started tweeting on December 28, 21, uh, 2021, that women in esports were telling white men they, quote, can't have an opinion on the all-female circuit. Thornton then stated that only quote unquote future sex offender male feminists wanted to help women's causes in esports while talented and prolific individuals in the industry don't want to support them. Thorin then tweeted, quote, tell you what, you do that cute thing where you tell me to get out of the industry I built and still rests on my fucking shoulders. I am esports, unquote. Um T shirt. <laughs> Give me the t-shirts. The t-shirts are great. Uh, we'll, 
get into this a little mm. further, but let, let's just start at the top with the ESL announcement and Semler's reaction to the discrimination and toxicity mm. portion of it. What are your kind of thoughts on that? Uh, first, I'd like to start this off in general by saying that I am actually an old school fan of Thorin. I think he's a, I don't, I don't. I, don't, I used to be as I, well. I also don't, yeah. it's, I feel like it's so hard when it, when it comes to like social media in general, it happens all the time. It's mm -hmm. like 1-800, it's just like, it just, people get away from themselves and they just like, it's so easy to like to lose emotion in mm -hmm. the tweets, you know what I mean? And then all of a sudden it kind of skates into nothing, you're getting dogpiled and like, mm -hmm. you know, it's it's a brutal world, okay? We're not here to, to flame any anyone specific or pick sides by any means. So I just want to start there. But in general, um, ESL has always been kind of like a front runner, um, especially for uh, female CSGO. Yes. Like they've been hosting female only CSGO events for like a decade or two. Sure. I don't, you know, a long, a long time. Like yep. it's not it's nothing new. Um, and we we've seen this before of other like an, all female only announced tournaments it's like sometimes they get flat flamed and sometimes they just don't you know it's like seems like super inconsistent which bothers me a little bit because it should just pretty much be like a universal like stance from the esports industry on whether or not we're like pro or con yeah you know and i think that there are pros and cons to both sides of things where it's like i don't think there's any con to producing more esports events that bring more people to participate in esports mm -hmm. like there's no if ands and what's about anything like you can make it so it's like oh you can only come to this event if you live in minnesota who cares you know it's yeah. like i'm not gonna shut that down like you can more people playing and competing in esports and being involved in any community is a benefit to the whole community or the whole industry so that piece i'm all about now i think that in order for the industry to not just be a completely male dominated industry we also have to start that exact type of mentality younger and I think that what I would have loved to see with these type of initiatives, especially new ones that are coming out, is that they start at the bottom scale and like go up rather than being at the top. Mm -hmm. Because I feel like the top doesn't have a lot to do. Like I feel like there's not, like for lack of better terms, like maybe there's how many teams are going to play in that? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So it's like I want to make sure that it's like, and I think that that should exist either way. But I would have loved to see it come along with like a, you know. Oh, if you've never, you know, if you never played before, or if you're, you know, building your first team, or if you, you know, are too scared to jump into that, like you can qualify through these like lower programs or whatever it is that have pricing that's also distributed. Like, sure. I just feel like starting from the very top and building down isn't how anything's ever built successfully in this sense. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I feel like they just it, it needs more of like a roadmap to help, and that's why things like um, we work a lot with like GameHers here, which is really cool, yep. right? Getting starting to help with like oh, you know, feeling more com com comfortable like in comms with people who you know won't be flaming and things like just meeting other like-minded individuals both locally and digitally that you can compete with and elevate your skill to the level where you can start competing in these events, whether sure. they're FIBA only or not. So for me, it's more of an ecosystem play that it's like, that's a lot of sponsorship dollars. Mm -hmm. And it's like, but who are we really throwing the sponsorship dollars at? Is it like the four to six orgs that have that signed CSGO female roster that are getting paid to participate in the event? Or is it like actually for the female industry, right? So it's like sure. for me, I don't really care about the specific, the specific event itself. I just love seeing like the it being looked at on the other side of like, okay, cool, but who's actually competing in that? Do they already exist? Do we need to help them exist? Do we just need to find them? They already exist. Like, what? Who are we actually targeting with it? So that's kind of where I kind of got a little lost in the in the announcement itself. But again, I'm all about producing more events for for more groups, especially minority groups that can bring more people to the industry. So yeah, I think those would be my base thoughts. And sure. the assembly thing is just like, again, with, when it comes to tweets, it's like, yeah, you know, you just like, you open the floodgate on yourself. It's well, like, you, it's, you got to be, if you're going to do something like that, you got to do it like on camera and well, like actually <laughs> share your point of view instead of just being like, here's a very one-sidedly douchey statement. See you tomorrow. Like, and that's, it's, what's it's felt, like, Come on, and that's what's felt so silly. Like, even if you're joking, like taking a jab at the, this, this female only circuit for being discriminatory and toxic because they are trying to create uh, a, a, a safe space for women to come into esports because uh, a lot of the discussion that has happened uh, a, a, as a fallout of this entire thing going down has been people talking about why there aren't as many female pros in mm -hmm. the current CSGO circuit and they say there's no restrictions for women to go. And there's so many guys saying, you know, hey, there where aren't women up there just because, you know, because they're not as good, right? And it's like, you aren't as good, so you can't play up there. So tough, why should you get your own circuit? And I think it, it's, it's really silly because a lot of these arguments approach it 
from purely just a, a skill point of view. They look at it and say, oh, well, if there aren't women at the top levels of CSGO professional play, it's just because they aren't good enough. And it, it's completely ignorant of a litany of other factors that women have to deal with in the gaming space. And especially when it comes to competitive gaming and top level esports with the discrimination, the kind of harassment that they deal with on a day to day basis. Uh, so I, I think that is really silly. And that was what has been most frustrating to me uh, about this is there's so many people that just come in and say, if you aren't playing at the top level, you're not good enough. And it's just completely ignorant of everything else that goes on in the space. So I think this initiative is a good first step. I agree with you. It wasn't something that I had thought through a ton, but I think and building my, that- My life experiences that make me feel that way specifically. For sure. Yeah. Building out those lower levels to try and again, continue to grow it. Uh, and hopefully what this circuit does at least is it is that bit of representation that maybe more younger girls become interested in something like that and then that interest is there yeah. to build out something like that so hopefully that can be achieved through this going down um because yeah, i've been to like a lot of lands mm -hmm. with clg red yes i've ran a lot miss, of lands miss harvey with clg red yep. they're insane yeah i've watched them mop the floor of full full brackets before mm -hmm. you know so it's just one of those things where it's like it never really made sense i like it's just like i'm down but it's just like again i want like like those, like even CLG rest if you like Benita and, and Harvey and all this, they're all mm -hmm. about, you know, getting more female gamers in there because yeah. of this exact reason. So, you know, I'm all about the top piece. I just wish there was a little bit of a ladder. Sure. You know, or some kind of like, you know, if you're interested in this kind of stuff, like join the Discord. Or like, you know, I'm just like, I hope that there's like more initiatives behind it, So which there could be. Yeah. So I don't really know for sure, but. That yeah. is the hope for the future. Uh, let's then go into just that little, little fun part mm. at the end with. Thorin's diatribes, his I am esports, all, all all this kind of stuff. What did uh, what really jumped out to you about that entire saga? I guess. I, I mean, it's it's so funny because like back in like the back in the days of esports, like <coughs> like getting kicked off with you know Halo and COD and CS:GO sure. and uh, or um, oh, uh, not CS:GO, but you know. What I mean? The other one, the older one, yes. um, and oh, uh, like CS 1.6, yeah, 1.6, yeah. Starcraft, you know, all mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. And it was like pretty standard to have villains, yeah, like absolute today's villains, nothing. I'm talking like some pretty gnarly villains in the industry that sure. were just like, you know, they had no sportsmanship, they were always super toxic, you know, like everyone kind of wanted them to win because we didn't really hate them, but like also we we're kind of like that guy, like he's the villain, yeah. you know, like, but. And Thorin, it's always kind of been one of those kind of more outspoken villain-esque type roles. Mm -hmm. So I think a lot of that kind of still bleeds through and true today, where it's like there is a certain level of persona ship there, where for me, it's like I can always kind of just be like, oh, yeah, you know, it's it's a really popular guy getting more clout, mm -hmm. you know, and it's, you know, he's he's always been one for hot takes. And I, I did a podcast with him for a while. Yeah. Similar to this. It was called... Uh, Put up or shut up. Yep. And uh, super successful on our on our uh, social media. It was awesome. He you know really carried the the show in the sense of like viewership and and, and clout and all that kind of stuff. So um, to me, it's it just feels like a, a, a villain play clout grab more than anything. And I the, the we heard the I am esports thing. Like <laughs> I, I I was just like I felt like that one kind of got me because I was like so unprepared, mm -hmm. you know. And I feel like a lot of people probably have a feeling that they like they are esports because like a lot of the people in our industry built a lot of what we're on right now mm -hmm. and including him right so uh, i think it's uh for me it's, it feels more of like a a persona yeah just kind of in character clout kind of vibe mm -hmm. in character alongside of him because it's like but in today's industry or in, in literally in today's industry that can have repercussions that might affect more than just gaining more clout yeah because right? back in the day something like this might happen they might gain a lot of clout and then you see him on the broadcast next week in this scenario yeah. that might not be the case because they might take a harsher approach. But, you know, it, it's one of those things where uh, the meme t-shirts that in the podcast that he'll be able to start off of this alone, uh, he'll be gone. And it was pretty awesome. So. Yeah. I mean, it, <laughs> I, I would say in the end, and look, this is by no means the first time that Thorne has wrapped himself in a controversy like this. And God knows it won't be the last. Hmm. Um, I think that to an extent, it is a bit of a clout grab. I, I think there are, though, some core beliefs that Thorin has that are still 
you know, persona or not, that he is still kind of stake, you know, putting yeah, his flag I, in I the ground here that I don't, yeah. yeah, that I don't agree with. And I think are hopefully, you know, the, the kinds of things that are going to be uh, phased out. And I saw, uh, I, I think I saw a great tweet the other day that was talking about how the Semler Thorne kind of thing is emblematic of, hey, esports now has an old guard. And that is, uh, I think, a good thing for esports. And it talked about how having that old guard that people now think are dated and don't agree with and think that we can progress and move past is showing that esports is maturing and growing up and growing larger. Uh, and I think that isn't necessarily a sign to say like, okay, it's fine that Thorne gets to say that because, hey, esports is growing or whatever. Um, but I think it is a good sign overall that esports is maturing and is, I think, preparing to step into new eras over the next five to 10 years. I mean, you think about the fact that we have, you know, the LCS is now, I think, celebrating their 10th anniversary this year is, mm. is crazy to think about. Uh, you know, CSGO has been going on for forever and all these kinds of things. And now we have new games like the Battle Royales taking over. We have a brand new Halo that game that looks to be possibly the biggest Halo eSport we've ever seen from a, a title that grew one of the original uh, growers of esports um i think is you know there is a promising future in esports and i just hope that you know there's been like death threats and all kinds of things that even if i vehemently di uh, disagree with thorin and semler on their opinions i don't wish any harm on them and i i you know disagree with anything like that i hope that it's, we it's, can it's, see those kinds of things and recognize where we disagree and try and implement uh the right policies and, and actions and beliefs in esports, but I don't think we need to do those kinds of things. Well, it's a pretty big conversation to have uh, with a limited amount of characters that you can tie. Hundred percent. Um, so I certainly. Just, and it, again, it, it's just like everyone. Yeah, not not the Twitter conversation. Twitter is not. And also because it's great... like just look at our conversation. Like we're talking about like ten different things. Yes. You know what I mean? Like everyone's arguing, not even like the same. We're not even in the same column. Yeah. They're like, okay, yeah, but uh, what about this one? And it's like, all right, well, yeah, what about that one? You know, so it's whatever. It was it was definitely uh, uh, interesting to watch, and I um, I can't wait to see how it ends. It will never end. Yeah. It will never end, but uh, fun yeah. stuff in the Twitter space. As always, uh, we're going to look back a little bit at 2021 here. Let's talk about the highest earning esports players in terms of prize pool mm. talk a little bit of numbers here i know you're a big big fan of the numbers give me the numbers luke uh these are just from a roster perspective team spirits dota 2 roster 3.68 million dollars per player <laughs> psg lgd in second place their dota 2 roster 1.16 million dollars per player uh team secrets dota 2 roster 742 thousand dollars Per player in the Navi CSGO roster, $687,000 per player. That is just prize pool. That's some big cash there for 2021. Dude, Dota. <laughs> the Dota? Dude, I don't even the have TI like a, prize pool is disgusting. That like, crowdfunding element is nuts. I don't even know like where to, where, where to even to say about that much money. Um, that's crazy. Obviously, Navi, insane. Nice job on, on the win. Simple. Um, finally got yeah, his major. Finally got his major. That was dope to see. I'm, I'm, they, that's well-deserved. Dota is absolutely crazy. I don't even understand. Yeah. I, I, I don't even. It like blows me away. When it's crazy to look at those numbers and be like, damn, that's nuts. And then think about the fact that that doesn't even take into account salaries. Salaries. Yeah. Because if you want to talk about highest played salary players, now we got to start to talk about League of, League of Legends. Legends pros and those and ones who are making multiple too. million dollars a year. Like, it's insane. Yeah, honestly, that's crazy. I mean, it's just Dota's got that just fat stack, man. That's just the cool. It's the cool. It's one of the coolest esports stories in general. If you guys have, have never looked into. Uh, the TI events in general, and like they have a whole documentary, don't they? Mm -hmm. They have a whole good documentary. Just go watch that. Um, it's a really cool storyline. Nothing more grassroots in esports than than Dota's just whole lifespan. Yeah. Like what even what even is like the goal? Like what happens to Dota? Does it just live in perpetuity of forever in its own little circle? You know, it, it seems to be just kind of chugging along. 
I don't know. You know, I'm not as well versed. I never, I've never played Dota never or Dota Two. I never touched them. I my introduction was League of Legends in the fall of 2012, and I never had to go anywhere else. Um, it's true. But you know, I I respect it. God knows I've watched uh, some TI matches and I've seen the event. The event's incredible. The prize pool is insane, uh, and the fan, the fan base is obviously incredibly passionate. It seems like. You know, with the, the the numbers that they do, there's no reason that Dota 2 has to go anywhere anytime soon. Bada bing, bada boom. So it's all big, crowdfunded, right? Well, not all of it, but like. N- but a significant portion usually, of that prize pool is crowdfunded. They usually put in like what 50 mil, 100, 100. I think looking at these numbers, 20 mil, 10 mil. <laughs> yeah, right. The, the, it probably was because it's usually around 30 mil, right? The prize pool. I think so. I think it's usually around 30 mil. I think it was. Maybe they put in 20 and they raised 10. Or the opposite. It's Something. one or the other. But yeah, either way, it's either way, it is it is so cool. Yeah. That's all. Nothing else to say. It's really cool. Next. Um we love to dogpile on Blizzard. Oh no. Uh, Are they in here again? But we get to dogpile on somebody else this time around. Oh, yeah. Uh Rat Games uh, agrees to uh, pay a hundred million dollars uh <laughs> to settle their twenty eighteen gender discrimination lawsuit according to a riot press release 80 million dollars will be paid to all of the quote current and former full-time employees and temporary agency contractors in california who identify as women and work any time from november 2014 to present right also paying an additional 20 million dollars to cover attorneys fees and other expenses uh obviously we have talked a ton of times about all the issues going on at blizzard recently uh, it is important to note that while we haven't discussed Riot's lawsuit previously, it was more just because... It was so long ago. What, yeah, it was so long ago and hasn't necessarily been in recent news, but it is important to talk about that Riot was uh, sued for a lot of the similar issues that have been happening over at Blizzard. And I would say, in the end, $100 million is kind of just a slap on the wrist here for Riot. I mean, it's not that big. Like, it's good, like... These folks deserve payment and compensation for what they've dealt with, but in the but grand I feel scheme like it's of things, more than that, though. You know, it's like I feel like it's not that they're paying out a hundred million dollars. They're paying out a hundred million dollars, like to rat to finish the sentence. You know, what yes. I mean, like they've been working on this for like two, three years yes. now, and obviously they haven't been in recent news for mm-hmm. hopefully. Again, I'm not in the building, so I can't I can't tell. But uh, presumably because of the fact that they have resolved and or are working towards resolutions of a lot of those and that is the hope yes i know like one it's like one of those things where it's like that probably came with you know a lot of different cultural changes or third-party companies coming in and fixing specific things Mm -hmm. or um you know minimal this or whatever it is like there's probably a lot of internal and company changes that they made on top of the hundred million dollars and hundred million dollars is more of just kind of like because everyone has to be compensated for their time and pain and suffering and xxxx right because there's a lot of different scenarios and a lot of things happen to a lot of different people and families right so obviously those pieces have to be resolved on a legal side, but also the cultural side, I feel like, probably cost them a lot of money. Like, you got to think about, like, in, in order, like, a lot of these things start with, like, you know, oh, I'll hire, uh, for lack of better terms, because I'm not going to sit here and try to, like, break it down for you, but human, I'm going to hire a third-party human resources company sure. to come in and do, like, a cultural evaluation of Riot, get yep. us, you know, make changes, talk to different staff members, you know, do an internal investigation on this and that. That probably cost them millions of dollars tens of millions of who knows yeah. how much money that cost them just to you know correct that culturally right so i feel like it's a balance there but it's also nice to see a resolution of a lawsuit like that kind of come to fruition and be, be like okay hopefully you know that, i can't fix something like that with money right but sure. it's one of those things where it's like okay hopefully this can put us on the right track to make sure that a something like that never happens again yeah. and you know be that they did what they could to resolve the you know, the people who were affected. And my hope is that, you know, the people who are affected feel that justice has been served. Hopefully they look at this and, uh, you know, get what they need out of this financially. And then hopefully uh, we see those changes because God knows, you know, Riot is, uh, you know, it is my favorite game developer for years. I didn't have one. And now the fact that I play League and I play Valorant and now I'm like, okay, Right is releasing an MMO at some point, and I hate MMOs, and I'm like, time, I'm gonna play an MMO because Riot's gonna release one. This is now my favorite game developer, and I would love, you know, God knows, I've gotten to watch you live, <laughs> just lose so much love for Blizzard <laughs> over the last six months. 
and I don't want the same thing to happen to me with Riot, but if they, if these changes don't happen, it, it certainly will. So my hope is, you know, there's a lot of really good people and I've gotten to meet quite a few uh, creatives over at Riot. There's a lot of good people who work there that do a lot of incredible things and God knows the last thing that I want is for anybody uh, to feel uncomfortable, feel unsafe uh, where they go to work. And so the hope is that these cultural changes have been made at Riot and there is a future without uh, these kinds of things. Uh, so we can only hope. We can only hope. I mean, it's, again, it's based on the lack of news. I can only hope. Yes. <laughs> you know, it's, we can assume. Let's look forward to 2022 a little bit. Uh, we've talked a lot about Halo, Apex, and League on the show, um, as well as Valorant here at the start of 2022. It's looking to be a packed year uh, for esports. Obviously, we're almost done with split one for uh, ALGS and the ALGS Pro League. The rest of that circuit, at least through June-ish, has been laid out. Uh, about a month or so ago, we talked about the uh, competitive calendar for Halo in the new year. Obviously, one of the big things coming up is going to be Anaheim in February. You look at League of Legends, we're getting ready to start a new season there. Uh, the Valorant team also announced their competitive calendar for the Valorant scene in 2022. Uh, as you look forward to now a brand new year of esports here in 2022 and looking at some of these big titles that we cover, uh, is there anything that's really standing out to you? Something you're maybe looking forward to? Oh, man. I would say, so Halo for sure, I think is probably the top of my list. I'm mm -hmm. like really excited about um, competitive Halo in general, right? Like the rosters I feel like are so fresh and new right now. Yeah. And like whenever you see that in a game, usually there's like an enormous amount of mix-ups that happen, right? Because like new players start to come out of nowhere. Um, players from other games start to rotate in, right? And like Halo is an interesting one. Like I've even seen some drama popping up. Um, of Call of Duty players switching over to Halo and people mm -hmm. getting upset about it, right? Like, that was <laughs> hilarious. Subtweeting yes. and then getting tagged. In the, brutal. It was brutal. Um, so I think I'm really excited just about uh, Halo in general. And also, uh, I don't think there's an eSport that has more opportunity as a new player than Halo. Mm -hmm. Like, it's, it's just like bread and butter open tournaments. It's like what it was built on, you yeah. know? And you can just... You just climb your way to fight C9 whenever you want. You, yeah. just got, you know, you just got to win the games. Like, not a lot of esports you can do that in, and it's really cool for Halo. So, uh, and the esports team is incredible. Like, they just, they, there's so much passion and drive behind the team. Like, that's, Halo's going to be the most fun to watch this year. I'm, I'm calling that one for sure. Um, ALGS is easy, pretty interesting for us, because obviously we have Team Esports Arena. Yep. So, I'm, like, pretty interested for that for sure. Um but I've been kind of kind of fell out of an apex swing, so I got like I got because I just fell too hard into Halo, so I gotta gotta re excite myself for that. And then when it comes to Riot, um, you know, I really thought I was gonna be super into Valorant for Worlds, but mm -hmm. like I feel like I got just burnt out after League Worlds, and then like fell right into Halo, and there was like no room in between. Yeah. So I feel like I'm excited for League again, mm -hmm. but like I I can't say that I'm really that excited for for Valorant, I guess. But like I want to be, but I it just I didn't get there last year, so maybe this year. So yeah, I guess that's my. The timing my order. didn't necessarily yeah. work out there. I think that mm -hmm. the Halo release actually definitely kind of diverted our attention quite a bit there because God knows we were, I didn't we were going to do it. Yeah, but I it, didn't even end up watching as much of of Champions as I was planning on because all of a sudden it was all like, wait, but but Halo's out and like LGS is on and. Ah, uh, there's like so much going on. Oh, That's literally, like, yes. It, it's a good, uh, it's a good issue to have having too many events to watch and too many games to play. You know, it's the right, the place that you want to be. So, I'm certainly excited about it. I couldn't agree with you more that I think Halo, and, and this is something I've talked about uh, in a bigger sense uh, on a few of our episodes, is that I think Halo is set up to explode and take its place among what I believe uh, are the tier one esports e out there. And I don't think that if you look at, you know, the history of Halo esports, a lot of people would have it kind of in the upper echelon because of how it, it built esports in the, the 2000s. But when you look at what Halo esports have been over the last decade, it pales in comparison when you look at titles uh, like CSGO, like League of Legends and others, but with the way Halo Infinite is poised, and I think with the calendar that they've laid out for 2022, I think 
uh, and we've already seen the early signs of it with how Raleigh went last month, Ooh. Halo is, is ready to take off. And I think it's going to be very fun to watch. Uh, and I think it's going to be an incredible year for the Halo team. And I couldn't agree more that I, the, the eSports team behind it seems very nimble and ready to do whatever they have to do to make it succeed. And the player base is obviously coming in full force. So that is incredibly exciting. I think 2022 is going to be awesome for uh, a lot of reasons and continuing to fight that battle of which great event do I watch and what great game do I play. I'm, I'm looking forward to that. So I think it's going to be awesome. 2022 is going to be very, very cool. Uh, as we end the show here, obviously it is our first show of 2022, but since we didn't really get to do a final show of 2021, uh, I want to take a moment to look back a little bit. Obviously, uh, 2021 was a big year for us here at Esports Arena. A lot of different things going on. Uh, continuing Series E Apex Legends, launching Series E Guilty Gear Strive, announcing Series E Halo Infinite, doing a, a ton of crazy events. We started this podcast, all kinds of things. As you look back at the year that was, what were some highlights, some standouts for you? In general, for a game, uh, yeah, anything, and it could be uh, esports arena related or outside, whatever. Yeah, I'll, I'll take two. I'll do two. Um, I would say that the Phase Optic collab event was definitely uh, my favorite, uh, mm -hmm. like physical event that I got to do this year. Uh, it was just an absolute blast having so many legends in the building at the same time. It was such a cool collab. Like this blows people's minds sometimes when they see it. Yeah, because it's like, is that a Phase logo? I'm like, yeah, and Optic. And they're like, what? <laughs> you know what I mean? Because like, that doesn't happen. Like sure. those, they're rivals, you know. So that event, uh, honestly, was super epic and hadn't got to do anything like LAN-esque for a while, so that was dope. And then uh, my other one, honestly, was uh, one of the last events we ran, which was the um, Halo 25K. Okay. Um, you know, it was just like right after the game launched officially, we had all the partner teams competing. We had FaZe Clan before they were FaZe Clan, like the, the whole nine. Uh, you really couldn't have just asked for like a more hype way to like bring esports in or bring Halo esports in because we, we were the first like big event with all the partner teams right yep. after the game launched. Uh, and it was just, it was just such a blast. Like it was so long. It was like, it was like two days straight of just, even though it was only one day, but it felt like two days straight of just Halo action. It ended so epically. And then, you know, just to, and just to see all those, those same boys that we, that we got to hang out with and, and run events with through all of Halo 5. Yeah. Coming to Infinite, pick up a huge team name, slap a ton of ass, and then go to Raleigh and do the same thing. It was just, it was just super cool. Humble brag, you know, I was DMing with a couple of the boys and it just, <laughs> you know, bought some skins. No big deal. No, it was, but uh, it really, it's uh, uh, that, just like the excitement of launching the Halo um, after working so much in Halo 5. Mm -hmm. That was an absolute blast. And then the, the phase optic that I'd say were probably two of my favorite moments throughout the year. If I had to pick two, one would definitely be the Halo 25K slash Raleigh, that kind of whole thing. Especially after watching, because we spent, we've spent a lot of Sundays here in the studio One or two. running these big brackets with all kinds of smaller teams. And it was always, I always found it interesting thinking about the fact because it felt like such small time, I guess, events for our Sundays. And then seeing those same teams for a 25K and then competing for 250 Yes. Right? In which it ended up being, I think, 350k was the full crowdfunded prize pool for Raleigh. Talk about a glow up. Do, we, so yeah. it was like crazy to see these same names go from these just weekly thousand dollars on a Sunday to competing in the same for twenty five thousand dollars. Three hundred fifty thousand dollars was crazy to think about. But obviously, when you look at the kind of talent and the name value that these players have, it makes sense. Uh, so that was really incredible to be a part of and. Uh, uh, obviously, super proud of us. That is the longest show I've ever been a part of, by the way. I think it was uh, capped at like 10 and a half hours, uh, which was insane. But it was a really, really cool event. And then seeing them go on to Raleigh was awesome. Uh, the other highlight for me, what I, I would say, would just be uh, my comeback to Esports Arena. It was mm. getting brought on to do to do Series E. I remember sitting down and uh, with y'all and, t you know, y'all asking me like, oh, have you played Apex? And I'm like, yeah, I've played it at launch for like a month and they're like all right well we need a we need a host for series e apex legends i'm like when do you need me by and they're like next tuesday and i'm like i'm gonna go home and download apex right now we're gonna get ready Dude, and i thought i thought you were gonna say uh the razor invitational the razor invitational was cool 
I really enjoyed that, especially because it pushed me outside. You know, yeah. and I enjoy getting pushed out of my boundaries. You were in the zone that weekend, yeah, I, bro. So <laughs> three, and that was three different weekends. I thought the funniest part, and I can't remember which one it was, but one of the weekends, I got my uh, yeah. I think my second dose of the vaccine, and so it's a it, it was a Saturday. Saturday, Sunday. It was like, yeah, it was Saturday. Sunday. Saturday, Sunday. You got yours on like Friday. Saturday m- morning. Oh, yeah. Saturday morning, I get my vaccine, and then I've got to come in and host the show and then host it again on Sunday. And I remember I told Luke, and Luke was just like, I mean, <laughs> and I was just like, I mean. and I told him, I'm like, I'll be fine. I'll work through it, whatever. And I remember just like two hours into the show being dead, and I'm just like, just drink water. <laughs> You're going to be fine. Like, take a couple Advil and... It was really fun. I yeah. like getting pushed out of my comfort zone, and that was part of that because I worked two games, two titles I'd never even touched before yeah. uh, with uh, Brawl Stars and, and Rainbow, Rainbow Six. Yeah. And we got to do, we got to work with a ton of really cool talent. Like, Drive, I get to host yeah. Fortnite with a member of CLG, which is my favorite esports yeah. org, Tocata, which was crazy. Yeah. Tokata was super cool. Uh, we got to work with a ton of really cool talent that weekend. I got to meet dude, the Brawl Stars talent. Tribe. We yeah. had, dude, the Brawl Stars talent we had was insane. Yeah. And we had the owner of Tribe. Like, that was super cool. The whole thing was really fun. So that is definitely, that would be, like, honorable mention there. Yeah, me too. That's of my the two, final vision. For sure. Well. For sure. And and obviously, CSON, the entire Razor team. So funny. They're the incredible. The McDonald's they're the best. Stuff, just the black. <laughs> the McDonald's stuff was great. If you guys ever got a chance to see it, just look up uh, Razor Invitational NA. Yeah. You'll see it. It's a good time. Yeah. We're going to have to do it again. CSON. Part two. We're yeah, down. So I was looking, I was looking at a in. video of that studio the other day, and I was like, oh, my God, it looks so sick. Remember the green? We boosted <laughs> yeah. up the chair on the back with yeah, the, yeah, yeah. Isabel on the headset. Oh, <laughs> so if you guys see the so video, good. too, and you see the chair in the background, this setup to have the so chair janky. up in the shot was so sketchy. We have it, like, balanced up on a box that is not meant to hold okay, it. Okay, but it worked. If you touch the chair, it, fell one it would probably time. fall it over. Fell one time. Yeah, we had All Isabel right. back there with the, yeah. the headset on. It's it like we had a, safety precautions. It's fine. All I know is that you look at it on camera and it looks great. It looked awesome. So, and it was a fun event. Yeah, 2021 was crazy. Mm. Um, real fast before we kind of do our wrap up, uh, I, I, I will mention it. I won't name who wrote it or whatever, but I thought there was a funny article saying one big prediction for each major esport in 2022, and a bunch of the predict- predictions were like League of Legends is going to continue to kill it, and CS:GO is going to continue to CS:GO. I was like, yeah. these aren't. Big production predictions. Hot I take. want a big oh. hot take, oh. spicy prediction from you, Luke, for 2022. Give me okay. anything. This team's going to win a title. This player is going to be the best. Whatever. Give me a Ooh. spicy prediction for 2022 because I was very disappointed by oh, man. this article. Spicy esports related prediction for 2022, huh? Shit, yeah, yeah. That's a hard one. It's a hard one. So me I will. I will on. start off. I'll okay. give you one. Phase is going to win a Halo Major. Oh. I think the Phase Clan okay. roster will win a Halo Major this year. Damn, I love that energy. Yes. I am a big Phase Clan fan. I only own Boo-boo one. Take my doo boo. I only own one <laughs> HCS skin. By the way, <laughs> okay, it's that one. I don't know. I don't know if you're the one that started it, but with the the Boo Boo Take My Doo Boo thing with like the little hands and chat, but I. When I, I remember watching Raleigh and seeing that oh, in chat, and I was like, "Look, <laughs> <laughs> it's it's like a, it's like a boo boo thing." So I definitely okay. by no means started it, but I'm a big boo 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 take my doo boo fan. Okay, yes. but um, I love that hot take. That's that's an awesome take in yes. general. Um, man, honestly, that's hard. It's it's a hard one. Mm-hmm. I might have to like take a week. That's okay. I don't know. I will put you on a spot though next. Because I'm that pretty. Up, next episode you, though. Usually, like I'm more of like the, like I can just like smell the BS. You know, I've been in the industry. Yeah. I've been in the industry for a long time, sure. so I can like usually just be like, no hope. You yeah. know, like <laughs> dodge that bullet, boys. You know, like I feel like I'm pretty good at that. But like the vice versa side, um, that's a hard one. You know, it's pretty easy just to follow popular stuff. So. Hey, <laughs> take a week. All right, all right. Think I'm, about I'm it. I'll ask you on the next episode. Uh, what have you been playing? Oh, what I've been playing over the break. Um, still been playing a lot of Halo. Halo is a super fun game. Been yep. picking it up. Just I've definitely just like, it's such a fun game to like get better at because mm-hmm. you can just like you feel just so, like you're like oh that was the coolest thing I ever did. Yeah. And then it's like now it's like every couple of games like that was the coolest thing I ever did. Yeah. You know so it's like I, I definitely am starting to kind of like get my 
um, get my groove in that game because again, I haven't played competitively on a controller ever, really. Mm-hmm. So except for like Halo Three, and like I never played like this. It was a different. It was a different zone era for me, at least. Um, so definitely playing a lot of that. Uh, TFT, I've been playing a lot. Just hanging okay. out, just hanging out in Diamond in both Halo and TFT. Just split my time too much between games, so I can't get out. But or I'm bad. It's a fifty-fifty. Um, so I've been playing a lot of TFT. That's been a lot of fun. Uh, Axie Infinity, I've been playing a lot. Uh, but again, that's a pretty passive game. I always play that on my sure. free time because I've been getting a little bit into those NFT type games. So mm-hmm. if you guys are into those, hit me up. Don't try to steal my account though, because it won't work. Uh, <laughs> trust me, they all come, they all fail. Discord bots, man. Discord bots. Uh, what else have I been playing? Eh, honestly, I think that might be mostly it. Okay. So I think I've really just been kind of grinding out those two games. Um, yeah, I mean, literally that is it. That's okay. all I played over the last like two or month. That's nice. It. Yeah. It's been uh, it's been quite a bit of Halo for me still, definitely. Um, Minecraft when I'm just trying to kind of chill uh, and and vibe. Uh, there's gonna be a lot of league in my near future. I'm trying to get back into casting league again. So I gotta start playing again. I keep getting on league. Did I just keep seeing you on Valorant? I have been playing a lot of Valorant. If you were on league, too. I would just be like, let's do OQ. I mean. I'm down. Okay. I'm but, not playing uh, 80 I have been though. playing. Uh, that's fine. I don't okay. care. You can play top. That's good. Um, or juggle. I'm not playing fucking 80 carry. It <laughs> hurts my hand too much, man. I got old man hand. I did. I can't, man. I literally. I, I play one. I play one game as 80 carry. I'm literally yeah. like this. <laughs> I could play like a whole night of. You're over there with like the on. claw. I. Can, you know, mm. dude. And by the way, on Halo Infinite, the more I think about it, the more I feel like I need to just give in and switch the controller. 100% you do. Yeah, it's, it's ridiculous. It's just like the more I hear about it, you know, I think even Golden Boy tweeted out the other day about switching it's to hurt, controller, yeah. just you, giving in, and I mean, I'm just like, play both, man, but do it's I like, need to do it? You should play, I mean, I, I would play controller if I were you. I feel like... And also, you missed my League of Legends 1v1, by the way, at the Christmas party. Oh, yeah. Well, I heard. I heard how it went, and it... Now, knowing me... I would have known better and would have not challenged you because I would have been like, I'm not trying to lose money right now. Even if I even if I thought, oh, I can beat Luke, I probably would have been like, it's not worth the risk. <laughs> the thing is, I let them pick the lane. Sure. So it's like, like what's like uh, Jamal took me mid, and I was like, I only play Annie. Oh, though. so you're telling me the strat would have been to make you go bot and yeah. pick an AD carry yeah. and then just lose the first game yes. and then win the next yes. like three or yes. four. Yes, that's what you... Okay, that would have been the probably, You probably would have broke my hands. Okay. But also, I'll remember that for next year. But also, year. like, I can't feel my hands when I'm like, you know, getting a little woo. So it's like, uh-huh. you might have lost still because I, I might have just broke my hands. Yeah, right. I, like, literally, my hands are still sore from yeah. that day. So still stretching them out. It's all right. You can uh, pay for the, the, the PT with all your winnings, <laughs> apparently. <laughs> Catch, catch my Venmo. Apple yeah. Brew, hit me up. We'll see. Maybe uh, maybe what I'll just have to do is I'll just have to decide for a day, hey, I'm going to play three hours of Halo, and I just need to play it all on controller. You just got to take the L's, happens. man. You just got to just – I turned around too slow. It's like, it's okay, man. You'll turn around faster <laughs> next time. Like, up your sense if you want to. Get your, you got to get your depth at the right angle. But, uh, yeah, it's been fun. I'm excited to play some more. We got definitely got to do some duo cues. Yes. Play some uh, – I can't play solo duo controller with you. I'm too competitive. I'll wait for you to okay. catch to be I'll, true. I'll, I'll grind it out. Even though every time I play with, never mind. Like if you're if you're if you're trying to play with somebody that's not going to be dead weight, like I'm probably the one to play with. So just there, play open. Just there honestly, just play open queue. Yeah. Because then it like doesn't matter. Yeah. Though I am diamond in open queue, you know, no big deal. It doesn't matter. Everyone's a diamond in open queue. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! All right, that is uh, going to do it for us here on episode 16. Luke, always good to hang out with you, man. Likewise. Starting up a new year. Happy. Uh, if you guys. Want to listen to any of our future episodes, get updated when they go up and live. Follow us on Spotify or on Apple Podcasts. Or if you like seeing our beautiful faces, you can check us out over on YouTube or on the Esports Arena YouTube channel. That's going to do it for us here. Make sure to tune in to all of our awesome Esports Arena content this week. We're back with Series E Apex Legends on Tuesday and Wednesday. Guilty Gear Thursday night. Then we'll have the newest episode of Series Recap Friday at twitch.tv forward slash esports arena. Y'all have a great rest of your week. We will see you again next time. Peace.